Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Can you explain heat and crushing? Can I explain heat? <laughs> heat. Heat. <laughs> heat and crushing. I can explain heat and crushing. <laughs> <laughs> heat and crushing, when I say crushing or heat is an energy. So anytime we're doing spiritual practices there's going to be a heat, there's going to be energies that are, are coming into the body and energies that are being pushed out of the body. Our body is like a bus that picks up many unwanted inhabitants. If we understand the energy world and that's why the, the, the common Muslim is not understanding and not putting the beads together to make the connection. Because they're taught very physical it's not making sense these teachings. If, if they only would listen to these understandings from the world of light. That you have a physical body is like a bus but throughout our existence there are unseen realities and unseen creations, those are energies. And insan moves about life picking up these energies. So then that's why Prophet brought for us all these realities, why wudu, why washing? Allah doesn't need you to be shining anywhere but because the reality of water and the reality of water is a Divine fire and the reality of water has angels of immense fire on it. And as a result of throwing this immense Divine fire upon yourself it burns away the fire of shayateen because Allah's fire is more superior. And Allah just said, my throne is upon the Mai, Mai is Meem and Alif. So means that this secret again is always there and that's why Prophet brought for us to wash. So everything that was brought to us from Sayyidina Muhammad has immense realities and these are for energies and, and protection. And Prophet brought for us Ruqya. Don't ever read those hadith on, on, on taweez, talisman and amulet is a lie in their interpretation. The words in Arabic for the amulet and what's the word they use talismans were for people that use bones and relics and bodhparast, they used the idol worshipper images and items. Those are what Prophet described but never is Qur'an and the names of holy people in that hadith or in, in that teaching. And Prophet encouraged the use of ruqya that use Qur'an to heal, write Qur'an to heal. Even you can charge in the use of ruqya that if you have been given the gift of healing it was permissible for the companions read Fatiha on somebody who had a scorpion bite and it was permissible that somebody gave them money for their du'a and for their healing. That's not the same as the hadith on amulets and bones and, and these other things that idol worshippers were doing at that time. This is the use of Qur'an and, and the names of Sayyidina Muhammad as a protection just like it's written all over the Holy Kaaba and you're making tawaf, it's the same. That's a taweez has Qur'an on it, has Allah's names upon it, Ismullah on it and this is completely a protection for believers. And shaitan is always manipulating things so people won't protect themselves. So the heat and energy practices are very important. When they understand from energy the light and positive practices you do bring a Divine energy and then the believers begin to heat up. You want to become lit, you want to become somebody whom has meditated, connected, connected your heart until enough lights have been thrown 
that immediately you have the ability to heat up. And they can heat up, heat themselves up and they can heat up and begin to heat the whole audience up. They can heat the audience and they can heat whoever is watching in the millions it doesn't matter, in tens of thousands it doesn't matter because the soul has no battery on it. The soul is not 9 volt, 12 volt, the soul does something from Allah's Divinely powers. So once Allah allows the use of the soul in the spiritual practices of a guide then has no limit and it's no understanding and no capacity for people to understand its potential, inshaAllah. And cracking is the process of testing and imtihan that if you want the, the fruit of a nut you have to crack its shell. So Allah, why Allah gave us these, these beautific fruits and nuts and all these things for us to understand. So walnut is the interesting one because it looks exactly like a brain. But the only way to get into that brain is you have to crack the hard shell. So our life is about cracking the shell to get to the fruit. So what Allah has hidden inside we have made a very hard shell in our life and our experiences and our conditioning and the inside reality is not very easy to, to reach for people. That's why then they become Muslim and submit. Then they become mu'min and begin to go through testing and crushing and crushing and then asking Allah to raise them to the levels of understanding of mukhlas. Cut again. InshaAllah. It's working clearly Sayyidi, no disruption here, no disruption here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, no say, disruption say, at all, here. are you good? No disruption Sayyidi. No disruption? No. So you can still hear me but I can't hear you guys? Yes. <laughs> oh that's interesting uh, what's happening on this side then, InshaAllah. Uh, dear Shay, how important is it for a new Muslim convert to take on a new Muslim name? How important is it for a someone coming new to Islam to take a, a name, a new name in the way of Allah It's important for everyone to take on a name, it doesn't mean that you're a convert. We have seven names into the Divine Reality that Allah has named us. And if our parents were believing, semi-believing then maybe they were inspired to give the name that Allah wanted for us as the first name that recognized onto this earth. But majority of parents, especially nowadays, no way were they inspired to give a, a, a reality name, a name to our reality. So it's important to lose one identity and to move to a new identity. So I've been through the desert on a horse with no name. You know that it's good to get out of the rain. In the desert there's nobody to call you and to give you some shame. We talked about that many years ago from that song. And the understanding of these realities is that people know you by your name and you know and act a certain way by your name. And when we're coming into this reality we're asking Allah we're taking a path of death before death. I'm asking, Mawt qabl and Mawt Ya Rabbi I'm asking to die before I die. Then the first thing that come to your heart is then that name of yours has to die. That identity of yours that they know you by has to die. You have to have a janazah for it. So you have to think within ourselves that what I did with this name and who called me with this name and what they identified me with this name that has to have a burial because that, that identity of mine I have to put it down, I have to bury it. And I live a life in which that, that identity I'm trying my best to bury that one and then not to let it be resurrected and come after me and, and come back with its character, come back with its wants and its desires. 
So it has a very deep meaning for everyone on the path. Now if they have Islamic name they should live up to the name because they can't bury that name. And that's why in Muslim countries they don't name their children and especially Turkish they wouldn't name their children by certain holy names, they would make abbreviated versions of it. Because when you want to rep reprimand the child it, you have to be cautious when you try to reprimand a child who's named Muhammad you can't yell at them. So they would call their children Mehmet which was a shortened version but it was not Muhammad So means that when we're given these holy names we have to live up to those names and we have to let the character, the bad character, the bad desires to die and really live up to the reality of the name and the holiness of that name and every name has a secret and every secret has a name to it. So when we're trying to bury something and ask to move towards something new and something divinely inshaAllah and everybody's on that path. So if we have a name that, that people recognize as not so positive its actions and we want a more divinely name in which to reach towards Allah's rida and satisfaction, that name dresses us and blesses us. When your name is Husayn salam you take under the nazar of Imam al Husayn salam So that because of that's his name, that's the happiness of, of what Allah inspired because those were inspired souls. Those were angels coming to Prophet and saying, name these names. So these are very inspired souls. When we name our children with these beatific names we're asking for the nazar of these holy souls that you're so blessed and so dressed please keep your nazar upon this child like an offering. That may I name him with your blessed name and may your lights dress him, bless him and guide him always in this life. And later in their life we teach them that try to live to that name and to its reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh Wa Alaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah How do we be genuine, ikhlas, doing something for others to please Allah to someone else who is taking your help for granted and even abusing you in various ways, should we continue to help them or stop because we could be spoiling them and inflating their ego, nafs, lower commanding self? Question. What was that again? <laughs> how can we how can we do how can we be of service and help people without the person taking advantage of us and and building their commanding self? Yes. I think when we talk about being of service, it's of service to the shaykh of service to Allah to Prophet and to the tariqah. This is not finding everyone around us and serving them because that can be a difficulty and you can become abused and oppressed by people because they don't have sincerity, they don't have good character and they don't have any limits. So that's not the understanding. So the understanding of being of service was for the Divine. So you find a masjid and go clean it, find something in the way of Prophet and support it. Find the turuqs and say, I want to be of service and translate or whatever service or computer ability I have, that's different. So you don't take this training and put it on to people. Now having good character with people has a limit and you keep your distance and you don't, you shouldn't have that situation where where you're giving of yourself to other people and they're abusing it and you have to worry about their station. So I believe if that's the question then it has to be towards the Divine, the Presence inshaAllah and not towards people. Serving people is, is not, is, 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 is not the, the, this understanding inshaAllah, especially if they're not of a Divinely nature and, and they're just using and abusing that type of uh, understanding. As Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam wa rahmatullah Is there any reality regarding people quarreling especially during the full moon days? 
Sure, we've talked about that many times, are there any realities about people quarreling during the full moon? It's an energy and a tajalli and anytime Divine tajallis come towards earth it makes the devils to burn. So as these lights come stronger onto the earth the devils become angry and as a result that's where the word lunatic comes from because the loon is the moon, lunatic is one who's been insane by the power of the moon because the overwhelming negativity within that person becomes out of control crazy. So that's all the crime that rises, that's all the emergency room sicknesses and crimes and, and catastrophes that are happening and the moon effect upon humanity and it's very real and it's something that we teach. So we're conscious of the phases of the moon and conscious of, of the energies that we are building and practicing and, and where negativity is uh, exposed inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.